Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today answers the question, what did Jesus see in Levi? The disciples whom Jesus called to follow him appeared to be the most unlikely team to succeed at the task he was putting into their hands. Without a doubt, the most controversial disciple Jesus chose was a man called Levi. Levi was the notorious tax collector in Galilee. He was a Jewish agent who collected for the Roman government. In the minds of Jews, tax collectors were traitors, deeply despised, excluded from entering synagogues and the temple. They were believed to be unworthy of salvation. And for these reasons alone, it was a huge risk for Jesus to invite a tax collector to follow him. Yet tax collectors were drawn to the messages preached by both John the Baptist and by Jesus. When Jesus announced the radical ministry he was about to launch, one of his goals was to set at liberty those who are oppressed. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus is about to do exactly that. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. Luke chapter 5 and verse 27. Notice Luke said, after this. To understand the flow of Luke's gospel, we need to stop and ask the question, after what? Jesus had just announced... He had authority to say to a paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven and rise up and walk. News of what Jesus had said and seeing the crippled man whom everyone knew in Capernaum walking again spread rapidly through the city. Which of these statements Jesus made, I have authority to forgive sin or get up and walk, do you think interested Levi the most? I believe it was the first statement. While it was made the religious leaders furious, it offered the tax collector hope. Levi had never met anyone who had power to forgive sin. He knew he was a sinner and had no hope of being accepted by the religious community in which he lived. The words of Jesus offered him the most hope he had ever heard. Luke says that Jesus went out and saw the tax collector sitting at the tax booth. He saw Levi. Most people looked down or away when they saw Levi. Jesus made eye contact with him. The word Dr. Luke chose for saw means to look intently at someone, to be especially impressed. It means to see with the purpose of visiting or becoming friends. It means to perceive something above and beyond what is merely seen with the eye. When Jesus saw Levi, he said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. Luke chapter 5 and verse 28. It was the most important decision Levi ever made, but it came at a great cost. The position of tax collector was coveted and a sure way to get rich. Levi most likely sacrificed more than any of the disciples to follow Jesus. Peter, James, and John could easily go back to their fishing business, but it would be impossible for Levi to regain the trust of the Romans. And while our main focus today is what did Jesus see in Levi, it is an equally important question to ask, what did Levi see in Jesus? He left everything behind to follow Jesus. And there was a price to pay for following Jesus, and he was willing to do it. Do you remember when Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. For Levi, neither money 
nor the power of Rome compared to the blessing of having his sins forgiven and following a man with power to heal. What have you left behind to follow Jesus? What are you still holding on to that is preventing you from fully following Jesus? He is still inviting people to follow him. And whatever he is asking you to walk away from, I assure you, it will be worth it all. His ways are better than our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. His ways are safer than our ways. So what did Jesus see in Levi? He saw a risk taker. He saw a sacrificial follower. He saw a credible witness. He saw a best-selling author. Levi, whose was name was changed to Matthew, became the writer of the Gospel of Matthew. Now, the Bible remains the most sold book in the world, and the Gospel of Matthew has always been the first book of the New Testament. The New Testament is the most translated book in the world, and more testaments have been given away or sold than any other book in the whole world. What did Jesus see in Levi? He saw a risk taker. He saw a sacrificial follower. He saw a credible witness. He saw a best-selling author. He saw a huge bridge builder between people. The main trade route between Africa, Asia, and Europe ran through the Middle East. One of the most important branches of this trade route ran between Damascus in Syria and the cities of Egypt. This route was called the Via Maris in Latin or the Way of the Sea in English. After coming down from the Golan Heights, the most important city on this route was a town called Capernaum. Uh, traders passed through Capernaum every week on their way to or from Damascus. After the heat of the day is broken, and people gather around to hear the news from Egypt and all of the stops along the way. Uh, join me for an evening of Arabic coffee and wild storytelling by the traders of Damascus who had just arrived from Capernaum. The traders were famous for their fascinating stories. And when the traders were about to settle down for the night, a trader who had arrived late said, Oh, there's one more thing. You need to know, Levi resigned his position as the tax collector in Capernaum. I was the last person he cleared. Well, you could have heard a pin drop. The traders were stunned. Someone asked, what happened to Levi? And after the traders stopped shouting at each other, Ahmad spoke one more time. And he said, Levi left his position to follow a newly arrived rabbi who can open blind eyes and deaf ears. Nonsense, everyone shouted. No, no, it's true. In fact, you know that lame man whose friends used to carry him wherever he needed to go, the one who has begged from all of us? Everyone nodded, some spit. The rabbi Jesus said to him, get up and walk, and he did. After that, Jesus passed by Levi and said to him, follow me. And Levi left everything to follow him. Well, it did not take long for this news to spread around Damascus like wildfire. And the next day, people from Damascus began taking their sick and their lame family members to Capernaum to ask Jesus to heal them. That is why, Matthew wrote, so Jesus' fame spread throughout Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, and those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them all, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 24. So what did Jesus see in Levi? He saw a bridge builder. Because of Matthew's influence, Luke wrote the following statement. People will come from the east, the west, from the north and the south, 
and recline at the table in the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 13 and verse 29. What did Matthew see in Jesus? He saw a powerful healer. He saw a beautiful savior. He found the acceptance that he had looked for for all of his life. Now we might ask the question, what does Jesus see in you? Jesus is calling you to follow him today because he sees more in you than you could ever imagine. Give him your heart. Follow him with your life. He is willing to use you beyond anything you could ever imagine. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. But before we close, let me pray for you a few moments. Perhaps you're having problems with eyes, and you've heard that Jesus opened eyes in Capernaum, and he opened eyes all over the Middle East. If you are struggling with blindness today, I just say to your eyes, eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. If you have some deafness going on, you've lost hearing in one or both of your ears, I command your ears right now to be opened in the name of Jesus. You need to forgive anyone for anything. Just say, I forgive everyone for everything. When people do that, ears open, it's an incredible thing. And so I say to you, ears be opened right now in the name of Jesus. Perhaps you too are lame. And we've seen four people get up out of wheelchairs and we prayed for lame people around the world. Whatever is going on in your legs that they are paralyzed. Like this man who had to have four friends carry him. Who actually got Levi's attention and shifted the whole direction of his life. When he saw that begging man get up and walk on his own feet. I say to your feet, uh, be whole, be healed right now. Feel energy coming down into your legs and into your ankles. Feel your ankles be strengthening. Feel your joints uh, starting to function that haven't functioned in a long time. And I say to you in a wheelchair, get up right now and walk in the name of Jesus. What a powerful God we serve. You feel that heat coming on your body. It's a token of his presence. You can have somebody help you get up, but in a few moments you're going to be walking without anyone assisting you. Would you write to me and tell me what God has done for you? And so what is God asking you to give up to follow him? If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, would you receive him at this moment? Say, Jesus, thank you that you have the power to forgive sin. You died for me in my place on the cross, and today... I accept you as the one who made the payment for me to be forgiven. And today, I take a new turn in my life. I give up the old direction to follow you because your ways are so much better than mine. You will not regret following Jesus. I invite you to write me about the decision to follow Jesus and we'll follow up with you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with Living Hope.